Hello grade 11s and grade 12s. Welcome back to another video with me, Miss Martins. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at another Newton's question. And in particular, we're going to be looking at one where they ask you to calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction. This is slightly more challenging. You can see over here that the mark allocation is five marks in order to work out the coefficient of kinetic friction. First, they ask you to calculate the magnitude of the force that's pulling the box. So this is a slightly more challenging question. Let's jump right in. But before we do, please, please, please watch throughout the entire video. I give teacher tips throughout the video and towards the end. I set metric papers. I mark metric papers. So I know what you need to do in order to get the maximum amount of marks possible. Let's jump right in. So it says a box of mass 100 kilograms. So they give me the mass of the box is pulled by a force F. We don't know what F is, but we know that it acts at 60 degrees to the horizontal. That's good. They gave me the angle. They tell me that there's a constant kinetic frictional force. You should know that kinetic frictional force stays constant when an object is moving, um, at least at a school level, of magnitude 6.5 Newton that acts on the box. So we know that parallel to the surface acting in the opposite direction, the frictional force Fk, is 6.5 newton so 6.5 newton to the left how do i know that it's going to the left because the box is moving to the right so the box is moving this way let's take right as our positive direction frictions to the left and look at what it says here the box moves with a constant acceleration of five meters per second squared to the right as soon as you see acceleration you should know that this is a newton's second law question so grade 11s and grade 12s, it's very important to when you see a Newton's question in the exam, first clarify whether it's Newton's first law or Newton's second law. And there are a lot of keywords that give it away. I did a whole video on this if you still get confused. But as soon as you see acceleration, and we know the acceleration, we know it's Newton's second law. So you start off the question with F net equals MA. That is Newton's second law. Okay, cool. Another thing. Do they ask me for a free body diagram in the question? No, they don't. But I want you to get used to drawing a free body diagram, even if you are not asked to draw a free body diagram. Reason being is because it will help you answer these questions. I promise you it will. So I am going to quickly draw a free body diagram for you. You should know how to do this. We've got the weights that point straight down, F, G or W. We've got the applied force acting at an angle up and to the right. That is F. We can label it F because they've labeled it F. Otherwise, please label it F applied. We've got the normal force acting straight up 90 degrees to the surface. And we've got the frictional force acting to the left. F, K. There's my free body diagram. Remember, this one is not for marks. So if it were, you would get four marks or four arrows. But it's not for marks. So I'm going to break up the force that's acting at an angle into components. The reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to be using the components in my vector equations in order to answer my questions. So what do I mean by equations? Remember, F net, net force is made up of a sum of forces. So for example, like Fk plus this, plus this. To know which forces I must put in my equation, I use my free body diagram. So this one is called F parallel or F x or F horizontal because they're all along it's along this horizontal or x-axis i'm going to call it f parallel and this one is called f perpendicular why perpendicular because it's perpendicular to the surface okay so it's all about surface parallel to the surface perpendicular to the surface you can call this one f x and this one f y but for this question i'm just going to keep it parallel and perpendicular now the first question, it says calculate the magnitude of force F. What we know so far is that force F acts up and to the right and at an angle of 60 degrees. So what we know is this. That's all I know. I don't know what this component is. I don't know what this component is. So I can't do trig yet at the moment to work out what F is. What I can do, however, is I can write what F perpendicular is in terms of f so remember how you do this is you would say f perpendicular is equal to the hypotenuse which is f in this case we don't know what it is and it's opposite the angle so we use sine or sin 60. f parallel 
would be you start with hypotenuse. The hypotenuse opposite the 90 degrees is F. Look where F parallel is compared to my angle. It's adjacent or next to my angle. Here's my angle. Here's F parallel. It's next to. It's adjacent. So F adjacent is cos 60. I know that this makes people feel uncomfortable because you're not actually getting a value for F. But we're going to use these in one of our equations in order to solve for F. So there's F. Here's F. I can either use, look at your free body diagram. I can either use the horizontal forces, so the forces going left or right, or I can use the perpendicular forces, the forces going up and down, including this one, this one's also going up. So up or down, or the forces going left or right, in order to find F. If you're not with me, hopefully it becomes clearer as we do the sums. Because they gave me acceleration, in the question they gave me five meters per second i know acceleration i know the mass of the box the box accelerates in this direction the horizontal or the x direction so because they give me acceleration and i want to use it and i know acceleration is in the horizontal or parallel direction in order to answer my question i am going to use all the forces in the horizontal or parallel direction so all the forces going this way left right and which forces are those well, those are F parallel and FK. Those two forces are going left and right. I hope you can see that. Right, so I'm going to take those two forces and I'm going to add them together. So I've got F parallel plus friction equals... There we go. And a lot of my students say, ma'am, why are you starting with a plus sign? Why are you putting a plus sign in there? Isn't friction going in the opposite direction? But remember, you must always start off with vector addition. Now, we fill in what we know. F parallel, remember, we don't know what it is. We don't know the numerical value. But we know that F parallel is equal to F cos 60 degrees. Remember, we're taking to the right as positive, And F parallel is going to the right. So it's a positive F cos 60. Then, friction is going to the left. So it must be a negative. And if you read the question carefully, they give me constant kinetic frictional force, 6.5 Newton. So I know that it's minus 6.5. The mass of the box is 100. And acceleration was also given to you in the question. So there's mass. Acceleration is 5 meters per second squared. So 5. Now do you see that I only have one unknown in my equation. And that is what we're looking for. We're looking for F. So we can solve for F. So 100 times 5 is 500. Take the 6.5 over. It's plus 6.5. And then our last step would be to get F alone. So you take 506.5 divided by cos 60. Divided by cos 60 because it's opposite of times. And our F is 1013 Newton. Now take note how they said magnitude of force F magnitude means you don't need to give me a direction so you can just leave it as that now where would you get your marks because i said in the question it's worth four marks so you would get a mark for giving me your equations f net equals ma and the sum of your forces which is these two then you would get a mark for substituting on the left hand side substituting on the right hand side and for your answer okay four marks just like that obviously teacher tip no unit, no answer mark. If you do not give me your equations in the beginning, you lose a mark. Our next question says, calculate the coefficient of kinetic friction for the box and the surface, and it's worth five marks. So you should know that the coefficient of kinetic friction is this little symbol over here. And you should also know that in order to use or get this coefficient of kinetic friction, we need to make use of this formula this one over here so n is normal force that's the coefficient of kinetic friction so that's what i'm looking for let's use a color here so i can show you coefficients of kinetic friction that is what i'm looking for and you should know that fk is kinetic friction now if you read the question as we've done earlier they already give me the coefficients of kinetic friction so we have that we're looking for this so in order to use this formula we just need to know the normal force. But I hope you can see that this is not a straightforward, you put the formula down, 
you already have all the numbers, you put them in and you get an answer. If it was a question like that, it would only be worth three marks. But because it's worth five marks, you should know that you're going to be doing two equations, two calculations. It's going to be a lot, it's going to be a bigger sum. And the reason why is because I do not know the normal force acting on this box. And a lot of students make this mistake. So this is a huge teacher tip. Just because the object is on a flat surface does not mean that the normal force is equal to the weight. A lot of students make that mistake. A lot of students tell me that. That is only true if I have a box sitting on a surface and there's no other forces acting up or at an angle. So over here, we have a force acting at an angle. So you should know that, therefore, it's not true. The reason why it is true for a box acting on a, um, just like that, and let's say the force is pushing it that way, do you see that there are no other forces acting in the up-down direction? So the only two forces acting is the normal force and gravity. You only have two forces. That is why the normal force and gravity has the same magnitude but opposite directions. In this case, we need to consider all the perpendicular forces or all the forces acting up and down on this box in order to work out the normal force. Why do I care about the forces acting up or down? Because the normal force is one of the forces acting up or down. So we've got the normal force that acts up or down. We've got Fg or the weight that acts up or down. But we also have F perpendicular that acts up or down in the up or down direction. So we have three forces. And what's important to understand about those three forces added together is that those three forces, so my normal force, Fn, Fg, and F applied perpendicular, all three of those forces added together must give me zero. Now, again, a lot of students don't understand why it must give me zero. They say to me, but ma'am, we're not doing Newton's first law, where F net equals zero. We're doing Newton's second law. So why does it equal zero? It equals zero because we have established that the box is accelerating to the right. So in this direction, the left right direction, in the horizontal or the X direction or the parallel direction, there is acceleration. However, in the vertical direction, in the up down, but the box is not moving or accelerating in the up down direction. So the box is not moving or accelerating in the vertical or in the y direction or in the perpendicular direction it's it's standing still in that direction yes it's accelerating or moving in this direction but it's not flying up or down so in that direction those some of the forces must be zero so that is how we're going to find the normal force and when we find the normal force we can put that in there and once we put it in there, we can solve for the coefficient of kinetic friction. I hope that makes sense. Let's solve for the normal force. Right, so I'm going to choose up as positive. I'm looking for the normal force, so I leave it as a positive. Remember, Fg is your mass times your gravity. So it's 100 times 9.8. Right, I need to substitute that in as a negative because if up is positive, Gravity is down and downwards is negative. So 100 times 9.8. And then F perpendicular, remember, that is going up. Look at the arrow, it's pointing up like that. And remember earlier on, we showed that F perpendicular, we don't have a value for it, but we know that it's equal to F sine 60. So by F perpendicular, I'm going to say positive F sine 60. However, I hope you're all saying, but ma'am, we know what F is. We know what F is. We do know what F is. Remember, we just solved for F. 1013. So instead of saying F sine 60, I can say 1013 sine 60 because I know what F is. And now you can see that I'm looking for Fn. So you take that over. It becomes positive 100 times 9.8 and yes you can work out what that is i'm just leaving it like that for now it was a negative it became a positive and this was a positive it becomes a negative i'm going to type all of that into my calculator as is to get me fn and i get 102 comma 7162c 
0.66 newton that's what my calculator tells me and it's very very important not to round this off why don't i want to round this off because i'm not at the end of my question remember we can't round this off i'm not at the end of the question so that's a massive teacher tip you cannot round this off why what did the question want remember the, the question wanted the coefficient of kinetic friction they wanted this i need normal force in order to get the coefficient of kinetic friction but i'm not there yet so i leave that as it is on my calculator and then i'm going to use this formula so i'm looking for the coefficient of kinetic friction my normal force i just found out is 102,716266 don't round it off and friction was given in the question as 6,5 newton you never ever massive teacher tip you never ever sub friction in as negative in this formula in this formula friction always goes in as a positive that's super 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 important then to solve for the coefficient of kinetic friction we say 6,5 divided by this um, number here in my brackets and i get 0, 0,06 i may now round that off to two decimal places because this is my final answer coefficients do not get a unit they are unitless now where would i get my marks i would get a mark one then i would get one here two and then i would get three four and five so you do get marks for solving for this and this my last question says how will the coefficients of kinetic friction be affected if the angle of the force f is increased to 80 degrees so if this this is now 60 if it's increased to 80 how will this affect the coefficients of kinetic friction and they want you to explain choose from increase decrease or remains the same your answer is remains the same and the reason why is because the only thing that affects kinetic friction is the nature of the two surfaces that are in contact with one another this the value of this changes depending on if i have a wooden block on metal or a wooden block the same wooden block on a carpet so if i have the identical so if i have a wooden block on a on a metal surface I might have a coefficient of kinetic friction of like 0, 0,01. If I have that exact same wooden block on a carpet, the coefficient of kinetic friction might be like 0, 0,4. So each pair of surfaces has their own unique coefficient of kinetic friction. I hope that question has been helpful for you. Please, please, please subscribe for more physics and let me know what other types of Newton's questions you want to see in the comments below. I will see you all in another video very soon.